It was the winter of 1996 and I was living life to the fullest, enjoying every minute of freedom as a young adult, and this included endless parties. I was attending college part-time, but was living out on my own, so I worked often to be able to afford rent and other necessities in life. I took a job in the restaurant industry, waitressing tables, and had just met a new group of friends who seemingly had it all together and were having lots of fun in life. I mainly worked the night shifts, and since there was a bar in the restaurant, we often didn't leave until well after 1 a.m. My new group of friends often took turns gathering at each other's homes after our shifts, and soon I too was invited to their after parties. It was there where I met him, a charming and flamboyant young man who had all the right words and affirmation I was so desperately seeking. He was a year younger than me, so he was just starting out his venture into the college life, and the age gap wasn't a big deal. We would socialize into all hours of the night, which mostly included drinking games and talking about life after college. When I would finally come home to my apartment, the sun would be rising over the horizon and I would collapse into my bed for a few hours of rest, only to repeat the same cycle the next day. After several months of hanging out with my new found friends and boyfriend, they started encouraging me to experiment with bigger things. It started with alcohol, more of it and stronger variations of it, which led to drugs. I was no stranger to alcohol as I dabbled a bit in it in high school, but this group took it to a whole new level. A group that started out as friends quickly became toxic. If you didn't participate in the alcohol and drugs, they would no longer invite you to hang out, or worse yet, they would convince you that you're a worthless human being. One night, as I dr drifted off to sleep in a room nearby where the friend group was hanging out, I overheard them talking about me. As if that wasn't bad enough to hear the friends going on and on about how worthless and dumb I was, I suddenly heard my boyfriend's voice chime in. Their words stabbed me to the core of my being, and I remember laying there sobbing, feeling so full of shame and disappointment with where I was at in life. How could I have been so desperate for love and attention that I lost sight of what healthy friendships looked like? Winter turned into spring, and with the change of seasons came a certain level of uncertainty. My apartment lease was up with my sister, who was my roommate at the time, so I decided to move into my boyfriend's house to save money. One day, I was over at a friend's house. I was telling her how I had been feeling very off, sometimes nauseous throughout the day. I had lost weight because I didn't have a huge appetite, but chalked it up to hangovers. She asked me if there was a possibility I could be pregnant and encouraged me to take a test to make sure. The details of that day are a blur, and yet I vividly still remember exactly where I was when life as I knew it changed forever. Collapsed on the floor of the upper level of my friend's bathroom, I stared in disbelief at the two lines positioned side by side on that little stick. Denial instantly crept in and I was convinced that I had a faulty test. I called my one true friend who was always there for me through thick and thin. She was my sister. The months to follow would be the darkest times in my life. It's amazing how you find out who your true friends are when you no longer are fun. Every friend I knew disappeared overnight. My boyfriend's mom asked me to move out the moment she found out I was pregnant, and worse yet, she told me I would be raising this child on my own. I had no money, no support system, and no idea what I was going to do. I couldn't even take care of myself, yet alone a little baby. My plans for the future seemed obsolete, and I felt so alone. For days, I would cry, not only for myself, but for this little baby now growing inside of me, for fear that I wouldn't be able to give her the life that she deserved. I was afraid and very ashamed. Being raised in a conservative Christian family, I knew right from wrong. Somewhere around the eighth grade, I decided I no longer wanted to pursue a relationship with Christ. The path I chose was to live much different than how I was raised. It was a path that promised a life full of endless fun and excitement, but I never knew the destruction it would ultimately lead to. My life had spiraled out of control, and the choices I had made left me feeling desolate and alone. I never envisioned I would have to rely on others to help provide for my essential needs, and I was emotionally and physically exhausted. So many questions played through my mind. How do you clothe, feed, and care for a baby when you can hardly care for yourself? I thought of every way possible to just get my life back, and after seeking out advice from family and friends, I ended up at Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center. I think I cried the entire meeting, but left with so many amazing resources, a few maternity clothes, and for the first time during the pregnancy, I felt a glimpse of hope. I suddenly didn't feel all alone, and most importantly, I had a plan. I would be lying though if I told you that this was without its ups and downs. Being pregnant at 20 years old, 
brings about its own set of challenges. As if having a daily visual reminder wasn't hard enough, the judgmental glances and the stares from complete strangers seemed to just add salt to an open wound. The group I had once called friends and had deserted me after hearing the news, the reality of loneliness set in fast. It was far from your typical pregnancy where everyone was happily anticipating her arrival. The friends I had known were long gone. There was one friend in particular, however, who never left my side. Both her and her mom provided all my baby's nurseries bedding, her crib so she had a place to sleep, and clothes for her first several months of life. She was genuine, non-judgmental, a constant encourager, and insisted that this would just make me stronger. Her name was Kylie. The night came and it was time for my little girl to arrive. With my mom and my sister by my side, I gave birth to the most beautiful baby girl you could ever lay eyes on and named her Kylie. She came into this world with a quick sense of urgency as if she was waiting for an adventure to begin. From the very beginning, she had such a gentle spirit and a sense of loyalty. It was like she knew exactly what I needed. She was perfect. The first several months brought about increased uncertainty. It was a time I needed to give in to my sense of pride and accept help. We were supported by the state early on in living on welfare. The shame and stigma that surrounded this was huge for me. It's amazing how one piece of paper can carry so much judgment. I spent many nights rocking her to sleep with tear-stained cheeks, promising her a life that was different than this. Thankfully, I wasn't alone for long. I met the man my daughter would call dad when I was five and a half months pregnant, and he was everything I had envisioned a father would be. It was a rather unusual circumstance, really, the first time I met him. Newly pregnant and alone, I was feeling deeply hurt by failed relationships. Still, I managed to muster up enough courage to go on a simple lunch date with a friend at a restaurant where my future husband worked. She worked part-time there and was certain that her boss and I would have a love connection. There was one small detail and I wasn't in the market for a new partner. I had a huge secret to reveal, the kind of secret that's kind of life-changing. Still, my friend had the confidence that this man she was to introduce me to would be trustworthy enough to not crush my spirit and I reluctantly decided to go. We entered the restaurant and I sat in a corner booth where my soon-to-be husband kept showing up with more water. His eyes were dancing with life every time he approached our table. My confidence was null and I wasn't dressed to draw attention to myself. My slender body frame was straining to hide the fact that I was five and a half months pregnant and I was wearing the biggest shirt I could find to conceal it. I made it through lunch and was relieved I ha wouldn't have to have a conversation with this man. A few hours after lunch, the phone rang. My friend was on the other end of the line and told me that she told her boss my secret and he wanted to get to know me anyway. Even as I'm saying this, it sounds ridiculous. Who in their right mind would want to get to know a woman who was pregnant with someone else's child? Who was this man? A crazy lunatic? Still, there was something about him, his warm smile and his contagious spirit that made me really want to get to know him and give this friendship a chance. As my belly grew, so did our friendship. We would sit and watch movies together, talk on the phone into the wee hours of the night. My heart was guarded, but he was patient, never forcing a romantic relationship, but always offering a friendship that meant more to me than he may ever know. From the moment he laid eyes on her, a tiny, perfect newborn, he fell in love. It was then that I knew he was the real deal. Any man who could love his baby, even though his DNA didn't have matched hers, was the character of a man I wanted to love. A love so genuine and unimaginable to me. When Kylie was 13 months old, I married her forever father, and it changed our lives forever. In 2 Corinthians 12:19, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness, and this became my new life verse. Every tear I cried and every agonizing step I walked through was not in vain. Redemption was always near and all I needed to do was trust. Even in my darkest moments, I never doubted that God could redeem my story and it was my prayer all throughout my pregnancy and beyond. He took a young, scared girl with a broken past and gave her the most precious gift of life as a constant reminder that His grace was more than sufficient for me. For every person who feels like they are defined by their past or forever judged by their choices from their past, my daughter is living, breathing proof that freedom through Christ is a real, tangible relationship. The feelings of utter worthlessness and the heavy weight of shame were gone and every chain was lifted the moment I trusted in the God who created me for a divine purpose. 
I no longer would listen to the voices in my head telling me I was nobody. I was determined to see the beauty in the ashes so I could encourage others that their story also matters. Seven years after being a single mom and not knowing what the future would hold for me and my little Kylie, I launched my own interior design company where I would help people make their homes beautiful. The idea of helping people transform their spaces into beautiful homes is my life calling, my way of living out God's special purpose for me. My husband Jerry and I have raised four beautiful children together over the past 22 years. I can't help but think of the people who stood steadfast in my life and the support systems that helped me feel like I wasn't alone. To my sister Brandy, my mom, and friend Kylie who prayed for me, encouraged me to give my daughter life, and just were there for me for a shoulder to cry on, thank you. Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center, you are a lifeline to someone who felt as if she could never do this alone. The resources that you gave me were so valuable, and without you, I'm not sure I would have had the confidence to know where to even begin. Every milestone my daughter Kylie has gone through has been emotional for me. There was a time I wasn't so sure that I had what it took to be a young mom, but you required very little. Love, support, and basic necessities. A few years back, I wrote her a letter on the eve of her 21st birthday. She was an adult now. And just a few months away from her wedding day, I couldn't help but look at everything with so much gratitude. My dearest daughter, these 21 years have flown by and I need you to know something. You are one of the greatest gifts I've ever been given. As I think back to that snowy evening in November of 1996, I smile. You're a constant reminder of redemption, the power of forgiveness, and unending grace that was bestowed upon my life. I can hardly read the next sentence without being overcome by emotion. The precious baby girl who I almost didn't know has grown up into this beautiful woman who continues to bless me every day. It seems like just yesterday that I was struggling as I entered into adulthood sooner than I had planned. The years when the days seemed so long and the future was so uncertain are long gone. I need you to know that I'm so grateful for you. In one way, we grew up together, and I'm so lucky to be your mom. Happy 21st birthday, sweet baby girl. So now that I've told you all about Kylie, I'd love for you to meet her. When I think of my mom's story, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I'm so thankful for the people at Amnion that helped my mom through this time in her life, for my mom's best friend, Kylie, and for my dad, Jerry, who took me in as his own from day one. I'm so grateful that places like Amnion exist to give women hope in times of absolute and overwhelming darkness. My life has been a constant reminder of God's goodness and favor towards us. I was able to start my own photography business at the young age of 16 years old and since then have shot over 100 weddings. I attended the University of Northwestern where I met my now husband on the very first day of class. From the time we were just friends, we talked about someday when we would get to be parents. Little did we know we'd get to be parents together. We have now been married for two and a half years and we are so excited to be taking the first steps together to welcome a baby into our family through the gift of adoption. We know without places like Amnion, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you, Amnion, for being a beam of light in this world and helping women through hard times every single day.